the Madman. It's time for the Festival of Legends Star Review. Deck 9 is a tricky class to design cards for because you only get 10 cards, but there are three different runes to make. And in this expansion, they decided to go with Climactic Necrotic Explosion for the Death Knight theme, which is a rainbow Death Knight. And that was never going to be good. So I think what is good for Death Knight is Death Growl. Uh, that could be a card that changes the Unholy Death Knight deck, which is already very good, and could change it to add more Death Rattles, potentially put the normally not even thought about Cage Head or Bone Shredder in play. Uh, so that's the unholy stuff. The blood stuff, I think, got some really good stuff. Arcanite Ripper is an insanely good card that'll definitely help Blood Death Knight quite a bit. Could make the Blood Death Knight a tier 1 control deck. Uh, with that, Screaming Banshee is a very strong card against aggro. The Banshee does end up being like a 5 mana, 3 6 in stats, and like, yeah, maybe that's not useful against certain control decks, which can just remove that for uh, better efficiency, but if it's ever going to be fighting in minions combat, especially against several small minions, then that's pretty good. And in that, there is some chance that Death Metal Knight will be run. I personally don't think so, though. It's pretty hard to heal during your turn as a Blood Death Knight. Harmonic Metal has some chance of making the buff Death Knight theme, uh, where you combine the buffs from Blood and perhaps the duplication card from Unholy. It's got enough stuff that I'm potentially willing to say that deck will be tier 3 level. So in short, expect the Unholy Death Knights to have sticky boards uh, with Foul Egg and Nerubian Egg, as well as other small death rattles, which they'll copy onto their swarms with Death Growl. Blood Death Knight is a very strong contender for the best control deck, and it's not a surprise that Death Knight will probably have strong decks across all three Unholy, Frost, and Blood, because none of its cards rotate out. So of course Death Knight was going to be strong going into Festival of Legends, unlike all the other classes where these new cards are rotating in and are going to shape the direction of how it goes. Demon Hunter got some really good stuff, and most of it is the Rush and Outcast package. The highlights of this are Glaive Tar and Rush the Stage. Rush the Stage can actually draw your Rush card that also outcasts, and the Glaive Tar likes you playing a bunch of outcast stuff. The outcast pool has gotten a lot better, and all of these cards that reward you for playing outcast cards, as well as all of these cards that reward you for playing Rush cards, they kind of all combine into a Demon Hunter deck, which I think is going to play like a mid-range deck. You'll just keep sending swarms at you. Uh, the Glaive Tar has a strong potential to be like a full hand refill. And when I say full hand, I'm saying like six to ten cards. What an insane weapon. So I expect the Demon Hunter to run a bunch of small cards. It'll play outcast cards that draw and generate more outcast cards. And then you play Glaive Tar and then you draw a bunch of cards and eventually you kill them. Druid features two main packages. One is a hero power druid, and I think that all the cards in the hero power package are actually pretty good. That's Peaceful Piper, Free Spirit Groovy Cat, and Zock Fog Snap, as well as Spread the Word. So the general idea is the Peaceful Piper gets the Free Spirit and the Groovy Cat, and the Free Spirit and Groovy Cat are just cards that are good enough to run in potentially not just hero power focused druid. So. Those have the potential of both being in a deck that I presume might be tier 2, a hero power druid, but also could just be a general good druid package. Zock Fogsnout has an interesting thing of being both good in hero power packages as well as possibly an Anubisath package. An Anubisath package would perhaps feature bigger druid cards, in which case Summer Flower Child would be very strong. But the question is, does Ramp Druid have the tools it needs? Uh, Ramp Druid does have Timber Tambourine and Summer Flower Child for that Ramp Druid deck, but there's not much ramping going on. Summer Flower Child gets a strong 4 star rating because it's just such a strong card, but I honestly don't really know where it goes. Like, it's just such a strong card, a number of Druid decks could run it. Hunter features two main packages it's the Spell Hunter and it's the Big Hunter. The Spell Hunter deck, I think, uh, could 
make an archetype that will be pretty strong, like tier two ish. We're talking about Naga Hunter. It'll add these triple cast spells in Barrel of Monkeys, which is a really strong card. You use that card along with the Barrel of Bananas to empower your Aerosmith and your Jungle Jammer, and then have a mid range deck that has good burst at the end, potentially. The highlight here is the Barrel of Monkeys and the Bunch of Bananas which give you so much credit for casting spells that your Naga will love you for playing Hunter with these. Uh, the big Hunter stuff, I'm afraid, is probably a meme. Over in Mage, the main idea is a spell mage, but it's actually a really specific idea, which is a lot of these cards got designed with Light Show in mind. And I think Light Show Mage, it, it could be a deck. I'm giving that uh, about a tier two status. So therefore, a bunch of these light show related cards are four stars. But instead of playing the light show mage, you may play the DJ Mana Storm combo deck. After playing DJ Mana Storm, you could play any number of cards, such as Pyroblast, in order to kill your opponent really fast. One thing that I will highlight, which I've given a high rating of four stars on, is Synthesize. Even though I can't really think of which deck made uh, that card wants to be put in, I've just generally thought it can be put in all decks. Uh, for one mana, it generates a 1, 2, and 3 cost elemental, and perhaps it's been overlooked, but it's kind of on the level of schooling, and schooling is obviously a really strong card. Uh, instead of just Silly Piranha, you're getting a 1, 2, 3 elemental, and those elementals are quite good. Like, I looked at the pulls that you get. All of the cards are good. But Mage does get a lot of generally good cards, and Cosmic Keyboard, Volume Up, both insane 5-star cards. Volume Up, wow. Four mana, get four spells, and you even get to discover a copy of one, which is extra good if you're playing Light Show, but even if you're not playing Light Show, it's just great. Paladin gets what I would say one good card, but the card is quite strong. It's Disco Maul. That is a strong two mana, two two weapon, which gets you a Blessing of Kings type effect at the end. Yeah, I mean, Blessing of Kings on a two mana card, which you also get two swings of a weapon. That's really strong. Great musical weapon. This will fit into the currently very strong pure paladin deck. Potentially fitting into that style will be Spotlight and Jitterbug, which are the two better Divine Shield related things, but ultimately I think the Divine Shield stuff may not actually work out. I think all in all, uh, the paladin aggressive deck will just slide in Disco Mall and will try out Spotlight, which seems amazing as two mana 5-5, five five, but uh, and it even has tradable if you can't, like, fulfill the condition, but you may find yourself trading Spotlight out more than you want. And for the control decks, I simply just don't see the Starlight... I, I just don't see Control Paladin really outclassing any of the other classes that could be a control deck, uh, of which there are many. Priest has two main themes to it. I do think that the control tools are quite strong. Love Everlasting supports a very Control Priest style that outlasts your opponent. Uh, Fight Over Me is a really good kill two, draw two spell for four mana. Uh, so both of those go into the Control Priest deck, which I think will be about tier two. I think Harmonic Pop and potentially Fan Club also have some use in the Control Priest, though those aren't as obvious of gimmies. Shadow Form Priest may enjoy Idol's Adoration in order to use the Shadow Form ability twice for only one mana. And then you've got all sorts of potential overheal decks, but I don't really think that a Priest deck is going to overheal. Uh, it seems like you would be playing some sort of aggressive minion deck for Priest, which I think there are better classes to do that with. And I unfortunately don't see any combo use with Heartbreaker Hedanus. Rogue got two main packages. I think one of the packages is the best package in the set, and one of the packages is uh, needs needs some help. And it's the weapon package that needs some help. Uh, there's basically not great weapons currently to drop your mic on, but where there are really good cards is to bounce around with Rogue having so many bounce cards, Shadow Step, Bounce Around, and Break Dance, it's the reason why I'm a little low on rating a lot of the control tools. It's because I think Rogue will win the late game uh, when you bounce around Astalor a bunch of times. And you could cheat out Astalor quickly 
with the record scratcher. So I'm thinking that that's like a solid package. It can survive with the help of Breakdance and Rhyme Spinner. And the combo cards are pretty good in the form of Beatboxer. But I think this is a tier one deck right here, five stars. Uh, you might even throw an MC Blingtron into that deck with the Record Scratcher. You can bounce the Blingtron in order to deal more damage. Wow, it's a Shaman package that is quite good. That's because pretty much all of the Shaman cards go towards an overload package. The ones that are four stars and five stars are obviously the ones that I think are actually good and go into the overload spell deck. In general, the idea is that Jazz base is one of the best weapons out there. Might even be the best weapon, but unfortunately it's put into Shaman, which did not come into this expansion strong. So the idea is by putting all of these cards, uh, the overload synergy, the spell synergy into the deck, you might actually come out with a tier two Shaman deck, but using Jazz base in order to cheat out pack the house early or using Jazz Base in order to Jive Insect and then Criminal Lineup for Ragnaros, or using Jazz Base in order to play a bunch of cards with Mellow Mania and then generate a bunch of cards. Like, this all seems like a good idea. And you have the healing from Altered Chord and even potentially Chill Vibes if you feel like you need that healing. For Warlock, there's two main packages here. One is a Fatigue package, which is which has imps, and one is control stuff. In general, I think the control stuff is really good. Uh, however, like I mentioned, I think there are some classes out there with inevitability that, like, you can't just outlast them uh, because they'll win. It looks like it's a world that may be hostile to control decks that are just trying to outlast the opponent. For that reason, I only have Control Warlock as around tier 2, uh, despite getting strong cards. The weapon is once again very strong, very good healing for the Warlock, and Symphony of Sin. What an incredible legendary, what an incredible value. It'll outvalue your opponents, but the problem is, is the value enough? Uh, the Symphony of Sin does come with disruption, Rin Orchestrator of Doom is disruption as well. And I think the Baritone Imp, Crazed Conductor, and Crescendo package make it into Imp Lock. And Imp Lock is a good deck. Uh, tier 1 deck, even, perhaps. Uh, so it loses a few things, it gains these things. Maybe Imp Lock is a tier 2 deck. And finally, Warrior. Warrior, oh, Warrior. Two main packages here are the Rift package, which is probably for control deck. Uh, pro tip don't run the Rifts. Probably will get buffed, I would think. Uh, they're real bad. Razor's Fen Rockstar is a okay control tool, but eh, I'm just offering some armor, whatever. Coda High Drum Kit, great, great weapon, again, great musical instrument, but not entirely sold on the idea of Control Warrior. Rowing Applause is a lot like Impending Catastrophe, uh, but obviously harder to pull off because you don't have a card that summons multiple Amalgams into play, unlike Warlock, which can summon multiple Imps into play and then play Roaring Applause. But yeah, the Power Slider, the Roaring Applause, the Neutrals, the Voon, uh, these are all the cards that make the Amalgam deck like a cool deck, but I think just not quite strong enough to compete with the other decks. I definitely should mention though that Warrior gets two surprise, also potentially tier three decks. Uh, the first is a Black Rock and Roll deck, where you play Black Rock and Roll and you buff your entire deck. And then perhaps you even play Lorthamar Theron, uh, and then you buff your deck with double, and then you play charging minions or minions that come into play and then immediately do something crazy. It's really inconsistent because Black Rock and Roll is a legendary and Lorthamar is a legendary, uh, but a fun deck. The other deck that could be tier three is a combo deck with warrior specific Fires of Zinashari. You combine that with Tony, and then you steam clean them. So you swap the decks, you change their deck into bad cards, and then you steam clean them when Tony dies. It's a pretty cool idea. And it is cool that Warrior can actually win games when your opponent has no deck. I think the neutral cards of this set were particularly weak, so here you can see the one-star graveyard of cards. A moan of silence for a bunch of one-star cards. 
Uh, the two star cards are a little bit more interesting. You got Frequency Oscillator, which we'll see play in mech decks, which I don't think will work. You got Instrument Tech, which I think uh, a lot of classes have really good weapons, so you might want to tutor them. Uh, maybe you'll run one of them in your deck? Paparazzi is an incredible value card, but are we really playing in a value format? I don't know, and I don't think that even as a 3-mana three 3-4 three, discover a card, maybe that's not good enough to play. The Rowdy Fan uh, is a 3-mana five, 5-5, five, as long as you have a card on your board, and people have been thinking that it goes into Menagerie, but the Rowdy Fan has a big downside where if you play it on an empty board, it's useless it's three mana one five if you play on a board where you have no minions you actually have to buff the opponent's cards it's it's rather bad anyways i think rowdy fan is tougher to play than expected photographer fizzle uh such a value card but long-term value i just don't see such an attrition deck working uh metronome a cool draw option for a lot of decks especially more tempo based aggressive decks but i don't necessarily see so many decks being able to run this through. So ultimately two stars on all of those. Where the three stars are, are basically the Amalgam uh, Synergy with Party Animal and the one Amalgam Band, and Tony King of Piracy uh, for Warrior. And then we got the five star cards. ETC Band Manager, you have seen, it's been played, and it's a great card right now. But where it is going to be better is with the set rotation, you take three sets out, of which they have some pretty good cards, and you're going to have to be putting in some cards that didn't originally make the cut. I think ETC Band Manager is one of them. And I also think with some specific weird win conditions that some decks have, Having an ETC Band Manager solution to those might be good enough to include ETC Band Manager for, so you don't just lose to it. And all sorts of tempo and aggro decks can appreciate POSIC Audio Engineer, who is a great tempo card. Um, the dream is to play them on 4, and then they won't have the time to play the bots, and then you have a Formula 5-4 that death rattles into two three threes. Incredible. I think what we see with this set is a return to a lower power level uh, with like a noticeable control in making sure not to print many outrageous cards. Uh, a lot of these cards I think will fit into decks that are good decks. But you know the thing about a card game is that if there are enough viable decks, you don't necessarily have the best win rate just by playing the tier one deck. Sometimes the tier two decks have favorable win rates against all the tier one decks, and then it becomes the tier one deck. That's the goal. And I hope uh, Festival of Legends pulls it off. Looks like a fun set.